In this video, I'm going to help you with a review for this electrical principles quiz that we do in the electrical classes and in some of the engine performance classes. This is for anyone who needs a review at home and would like to watch this. We'll go through a simple, basic quiz here so that we can uh, just see the principles that you'd use to solve this. So this is Ohm's Law. And we start out with a, a series circuit, then we have a parallel circuit, and then we have a circuit that's got a mixture of a series and a parallel in it. But we start with question number one. And remember that all of these are 12 volts. We're always going to use 12 volts as our voltage. This represents the battery. And while this looks like a straight line, it's actually not. It's a loop. It's a complete loop all, from one side of the battery all the way back to the other. This represents the ground where it connects to the metal on the car, and so does this. So really, these are connected to each other in a loop like this. All right. So to start out, the question asks, what is total circuit resistance? We come over and we have one bulb that has three ohms of resistance and one that has nine ohms of resistance. Because they're in series and all the current that leaves the battery must pass through both of them, the resistance is cumulative. So it's a total of 12 ohms that it has to pass through. Total circuit resistance is 12 ohms. Total circuit current is going to be a function of the 12 ohms and the 12 volts. So if we have 12, ohm, or 12 volts pushing current through 12 ohms, Ohm's law says that we take 12 volts divided by 12 ohms and we end up with 1 amp. Now current, if there is 1 amp of current that leaves the battery and flows through the circuit, Obviously, one amp has to flow through that bulb, and one amp has to flow through this bulb. So when it asks, what's the current through bulb one? It's one amp. Through bulb two, it's also one amp. The current can't change. Electrons can't be created or destroyed halfway through the circuit. Okay. The next one says, what is the voltage drop across bulb one? Now, when it comes to voltage drop, we know that we have 12 volts of the battery. So we started out with we had 12 volts on the positive side and zero volts on the other side. So all 12 volts has to be dropped throughout the circuit, and if things are functioning correctly, the bulbs will drop to 12 volts. However, because there are two of them, we've got to figure out how that voltage is split up between the two bulbs. The easiest way to do that is by taking the one amp that we said was flowing through this, this, current, this circuit here. One amp times three ohms. That's Ohm's law again. So if we multiply one amp times three ohms, that tells us that we have three volts. So three volts are dropped in the first bulb, in bulb one. Now the remaining voltage, if we have three volts dropped there, the remaining voltage is obviously nine volts because it has to add up to 12. But we could also say, well, one amp times nine ohms is nine volts for a total of 12. Now we're down to the conversion questions here. 315 kilo ohms, remember the the big K, the kilo, means thousand, so 315,000 ohms is the answer there. You could also say, well, when you multiply it by a thousand, you can move the decimal over three places. We did that to add three more zeros to it, so 315,000 ohms. 440 amps, I'm sorry, 0 0.440 amps is less than an amp. Remember that one amp is a thousand milliamps. And 500 milliamps would be half of an amp. So this is less than, less than half of an amp. In fact, it's about 0.4 amps or 440 milliamps. But depending on how you look at it, you can also say, well, we move the decimal over three places to the right again because we're going from, from a larger denomination to a smaller one. Okay, now down to the second circuit. This one is a parallel circuit. And really in this circuit, all we're doing is treating it as two separate, two totally separate circuits. They really don't influence each other at all, other than this one portion of the circuit that they share, right? So if someone asks a question about this part of the circuit right here, that would be the total current flow that's leaving the battery, then we'll have to treat them as, as a combined circuit. But otherwise, they're really two separate circuits. So to, to do this, I want to skip the first two questions that ask what total is. So we'll come down to the third question that says, what is the current through bulb one? That's easy. 
I say, well, I've got 12 volts, right? Again, 12 volts on all the circuits. I've got 12 volts pushing current through two ohms. So it'd be 12 divided by two or six amps, right? So we have six amps in this leg. And down here, our resistance is down below here. Down here, we've got a two ohm bulb again. So 12 volts divided by two ohms is six amps. Now I can go back up to the top if I want to, and I can say, okay, what is the total, total current here? Well, if there's six amps through this leg and six amps through this leg, how many amps left the battery? The answer is 12 amps left the battery. So total current is 12 amps. And if total current is 12 amps, and there are 12 volts pushing that through the resistance, what is the total resistance? 12 divided by 12? It's 1 ohm. You might say, well, how did we get 1 ohm if we had 2 ohms here and 2 ohms here? The answer is it's a calculated resistance. We have to figure out what the equivalent resistance is when we put two of them together. It's always going to be lower than the lowest resistance we have here because adding another leg or adding another path actually reduces the resistance and makes it so that more current can flow. It's kind of like a checkout lane at a grocery store. Opening up another checkout lane doesn't cause more resistance, even though that usually is the resistance to people leaving the store. Adding another checkout lane actually reduces resistance and allows more people to check out and leave the store. Okay, so voltage drop across bulb one, really easy. That's actually the only bulb in the circuit. If we look at it, here's the battery, right? There's nothing else in that circuit. There's no series circuit here. So all 12 volts gets dropped there. Or if you want to calculate it, you can say 6 amps times 2 ohms, and it ends up being 12 volts also. So it doesn't matter how you, how you do that. Voltage drop across bulb 2. Again, we had 6 amps going through a bulb that had 2 ohms of resistance. A total of 12 volts dropped there also. Whenever there's only one bulb in the circuit, that should always drop all of the voltage. Okay, so let's calculate these, 518 millivolts to volts. So we're going from a smaller denomination to a larger one. So we end up moving the decimal three places to the left. So that is 0.518 volts. 8.92 kilo ohms, we're going from a larger denomination to a smaller. So we say it's 8.92 thousand ohms. So 8,920 ohms. 0 0.077 volts, large denomination to a small one. So we move the decimal place to the right three places. We end up with 77 millivolts. Okay, now quickly down to here. Same principle applies. It's a, it's a parallel circuit. So we don't want to calculate the first two until we've done the other questions down here. So current through bulb one. Well, we've got 12 volts pushing through four ohms. So 12 divided by three, or 12 divided by four. 3 amps. Down here we've got 12 volts pushing through 3 volts and 9 volts, but again that's a that's a series circuit. Just like up here we had 3 and 9. So we really have 12 ohms here, so 12 volts pushing through 12 ohms would result in 1 amp flowing through that leg of the circuit. So current through bulb 1, 3 amps, current through bulb 2, 1 amp, current through bulb 3 is 1 amp. Now it says, what is the total current? Well, we had three amps here and one amp here. So how much left the battery? Obviously, four amps left the battery. If we have four amps flowing, we know that uh, 12 divided by something equals four amps. If we have four amps flowing, it's gotta be a three, three ohms is the total circuit resistance. Does that make sense? It's smaller than the smaller resistor here because we have four ohms here and 12 here, so it's smaller than the four. Voltage drop across bulb one. Well, bulb one is the only bulb in this circuit, the only bulb that stands in the way of those electrons from getting from one side of the battery to the other. So it should drop all 12 volts, or we can say three times four, three amps times four ohms, 12 volts drop there. Now down here, there are two bulbs that it has to go through. So we can calculate it. If we have one amp flowing through them, one amp going through a three ohm bulb would result in a one times three, three volt drop. 
leaving 9 volts or 1 times 9 for a 9 volt drop in bulb 3 right there. Now that's quickly how you go through this. Hopefully you can use this video as you review or practice at home, get better at this. I've come to realize the more that I use electricity and the more that I understand it, the more everything comes back to understanding the relationship between voltage, resistance, and current. And repetition is a key, I think, to understanding this. So I highly encourage you to practice these quizzes and get good at it and understand the principles, not just memorizing the formulas or the calculations, but understanding the principles that, that cause voltage and current and resistance to act the way they do. And once you do that, you'll be able to test and understand electrical circuits in a much deeper way. Good luck.